Hello everybody, welcome to Air Venture 2018. Uh, this is Oshkosh Airco, the largest fly-in air show. I'm here teaching with Lincoln Electric. Uh, I'm teaching TIG welding. Uh, we teach two classes a day, four hours a piece. As you can imagine, I don't have a lot of extra time off to go around, but since not a lot of people that don't live in this part of the Midwest ever get to come to this air show unless you're an aviator, I thought I'd try to give you a real quick look around. And most of you guys already know the follow the channel. I really, really, really enjoy World War II aircraft. So this is where I'm gonna spend most of the time here. The afternoon air show is getting ready to start. So a lot of the planes here have already left, but I wanna give you a look at some of the really cool vintage aircraft that are here. Because if you're a fabricator, a machinist, a metal worker, a welder, all of this is directly related to what we do. This is what made the United States one of the superior uh, powers to be during the time of World War II. So behind me is a flight line. We're going to turn. You can see all the warbirds behind me. That's a wild cat. I think that's a wild cat. It's a wild cat or a bear cat. But at the beginning of World War II, that was one of our Pacific Navy aircraft. Now, I'm going to do a real quick uh, pan behind me while I'm talking. That's a DC-3, but when the military used it, they called it a C-47. Okay? So a C-47, that's what all our paratroopers jumped out over Normandy in. I want to show you something cool about that. We're going to go to forward-facing camera real quick. The camera is going to cooperate with me. All right, there's two more of them over there. They're DC-3s, but the military uses, they were called the C-47. Notice the black and sorry for the noise, the air show is getting ready to start. Notice the black and white stripes on there. Those were placed when we invaded Normandy. They put the black and white stripes on our aircraft. They did it for the reason so that we didn't shoot down our own airplanes. Anything with a black and white stripe was Allied forces. So those are called invasion stripes. These D3Cs are set up to be like World War II era. Hang on, I'm trying to get the camera to cooperate. So it's really bright out here, guys. Um, sorry, I can't see the screen all that well. Now look behind me. Not to quote another YouTuber, <laughs> but it's Skookum as Frig. That's a Boeing B-17G Flying Fortress. There's not many left to fly in the world. Hey guys, I'm back. I hope we didn't lose you, sorry. Most likely it's either radar or somebody's radio um, out here. But um, this plane behind me is a Boeing B-17G. This is a G model flying fortress. See the gun under the chin and the nose? That makes it a G model, amongst other things. But that's the most recognizable feature. Not really important. But if you follow some of the things on my channel, um, if you go to American Rotary's YouTube channel, again, American Rotary's YouTube channel, I got to tour the Memphis Bell. The Memphis Bell is a famous B-17G. They made a movie about it. Actually, it's a B-17F. It's a MEF model. Not to be too technical here. But I take you inside that aircraft. You get to see the guns, the 50 cals, the Norton bomb site, the controls, everything inside that aircraft. That's that way for you guys. That is cool as hell. Might be one of my favorite bombers. So here's what I want to do. Because a lot of folks don't get the opportunity to come here, I want to turn the forward facing camera around and haul butt through here. I got to get back to teach the TIG class for this afternoon, but I want to show you some really interesting things from the Warbird section. Honestly, right now, probably 65% of the aircraft are missing. They're in the air or prepped in the flight line for the afternoon air show. But it's also the only time I'm not teaching, so it's the only time I have to, to bring you guys here. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip the forward camera and I'm going to walk you through quickly. Anybody wants to see something that when we're walking through here, type in a comment. It pops up on my screen. I'll be happy to get you a better look at anything that's here. So, forward facing camera. You see that crowd in the bleachers? This is why I love Oshkosh. There is a World War II Mustang pilot that flew the A-model Mustang, the very early Mustang. That's an A-model Mustang. He is talking on the big screen monitor. He's in there over there and I think in a wheelchair. And he's telling the stories of World War II to all of these people. And this is what's cool. They're recording it for future generations. All right, so he's telling the story. I would love to be able to give that to you guys. But honestly, because I'm here for work, I, I don't have the time to do it. So you can see his, his Mustang sitting over there. 
gonna get to see a few more here in a minute. Just to show you how massive these DC-3s are, again, not as big as the Flying Fortress. 10 crewmen, by the way, on that. If you shoot down one of those, you tell 10, 10 Americans. They're in World War II. Look at how big this big boy is compared to the folks. You fly all the way over to Normandy or wherever and just jump out that little door. I'm pretty sure there's a brass set somewhere. It's somebody's missing. These are usually Pratt Whitney's, I think, or Wright Allison's. Yeah, so all you machinist guys, you like all your Pratt Whitney tools? Why do you think you have all the machinist tools to build those? So the, one of the things I love in, out here is the fact that these yeah, ladies dress up like bomber nose art girls and they get out here on these airplanes and reenact, uh, you know, the scenes from World War II. You know, the short shirts and the red lipstick, curly hair. If you're a World War II buff, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Dunkirk, Spitfire, except that's not a fiberglass model. I was just in uh, at Bar Z, I took my son to the Air Museum. That Spitfire in Dunkirk is a fiberglass model that a guy sits in. It's there at an Air Museum. This is the real Supermarine Spitfire. Twin supercharged Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. And then I went to Japan for a wonderful tour. It was Japan that I flew jets for the first time. I had been firing three ships. But in Japan, the so guys, I don't want to be rude to this guy while he's talking, so I'm going to speak quietly. Japan, the Japanese are going crazy over that. You guys see it? And uh, there's a couple it's of It's a Tuskegee Airman. Splice, uh, the Red Tail. Officer. His wife was in Filipino. How cool is that? And she was a good dancer, so my wife, the four of us, used Another to Supermarine Spitfire? And we ended up on some shows around that thing. And one day, this fellow, Ed Dwight, who was a. I don't want to be disrespectful while he's talking, so I'm going, be, I'm going to be quiet while we get a little bit of ways from him. This is a P-51 Mustang. This is All right, guys, for those of you that might be hanging around, sorry. I think the radar uh, that's out here reset my, my phone. Um, we're way out in the middle of nowhere, but we're still in the exact same spot, so... Um, let me turn the camera around. Warbirds. I can't see what they are for the buildings. They look like T6s. Alright, this is a P-51 Mustang and A model. This is the very first revision, the one that we built basically in 180 days during World War II. This had the Allison, it first had the Allison en uh, engine and it didn't have the Rolls Royce Merlin and it didn't have the bubble canopy. The pilots hated this because they couldn't see what was diving on them from behind. So later models of the Mustang had a bubble canopy. You know, it's one of those things they just worked out. So you are correct. Somebody made the comment, uh, the save the Battle of Britain or save Great Britain, this aircraft. Yep, Spitfire, pretty badass. Not sure what this is. George, this is a P-40 Warhawk, set up in the Flying Tigers colors. Flying Tigers are the American Look, Volunteer Group, were a group of Americans before World War II, American aviators, that were allowed to leave the U.S. military and voluntarily go fight with Great Britain using these aircraft, the P-40. Pretty awesome airplane. We used this one all the way through World War II. Pretty solid airplane. You can get a lot out of it. All right, probably the largest group of Mustangs you'll probably ever see in one place is here. These are all P-51 Mustangs. Most of these are the D model Mustang. If you notice, the canopy doesn't have the back on it on this aircraft. 
that's the cool thing about it. This canopy allowed the pilot to turn around and take a look behind him, make sure the fighter wasn't on a six. Now, as you can hear, a lot of these aircraft, uh, I'll go for uh, the P-40 probably did fly in China. I, I don't know my part war history that well, that part of it, but that's a P-40 Warhawk or a Kitty Hawk, depending on what part of the theater it was used in. That's something different. It's not a P-40. Sorry, right there. It looks different, and I'm not sure. I, I plead ignorance on my uh, type of aircraft. This is probably one of the smallest days here for aircraft because it's a Saturday. Um, a lot of the guys are out already flying around. This is a beautiful example of a P-51 Mustang. I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but it literally gleams, gleams from the flitz polish that they got on this thing. Beautiful aircraft. Of course, let's be honest, an ugly P-51 Mustang is still pretty than anything, more pretty than anything I got. Now, F4U Corsair, F4U Corsair with its wings down. Okay, I think we're back. Am I the pilot? Shit, I wish I was the pilot, man. No, I only got about 30 hours towards my my private pilot's license. And then I had kids and got married, so I have no money for that. We're just on the other side of these. These are Corsairs. One, two, three, four. They're all F4U Corsairs. So here's a cool thing about this, this airplane. You see the bent wings? See how that wing goes down and comes up? There is a reason they designed that bent wing in this aircraft. This is a carrier-based aircraft, so they wanted a big Pratt Whitney radial engine with a big propeller on it, right? Because they wanted a lot of thrust to get that plane off the carrier deck in a short amount of time. If they had used the straight wings like the Wildcat, the Bearcat, and the Hellcat that had the straight wings, they would have had a really long landing gear, and that landing gear tended to be real weak. So it was, it was innovative to take this wing down and then back up it created a much shorter stouter landing gear for those hard carrier landings interesting thing about this plane when it taxis the pilot cannot see over the nose of the aircraft he can't see anything in front of him he has to taxi back and forth zigzag back and forth to see this is not the guy you want to play chicken with because he doesn't know where you are now the Japs feared this plane I'm sorry, that's probably not politically correct. The Japanese feared this aircraft. If you ever watched Black Sheep Squadron going up as a kid, Pappy Boeington, this was his aircraft. He's a real person, not just something made up in a movie. So this plane, this plane, this plane, this plane, they're all F4U Corsairs. The wings all fold up so they can fit below deck on the carrier. They came in different configurations throughout the war. They changed them and improved them. Better engines, better cooling, different armament. But for the most part, this was our Pacific Theater aircraft. It's a... Uh... Yes, uh, I'll go for thank you. He brought that up. When they lined up on the carrier to come in to land on the carrier, they had to turn the airplane and look out the side wing to make on their approach to landing because they couldn't see the turn right at the last minute and drop on the deck of the carrier because they couldn't see over the nose of that aircraft. That's not just a single row of cylinders. There's cylinders behind rows of cylinders. That's a big ass engine and that's a big prop. Lots, lots, lots of thrust. Remember you want to get that plane off, get, get the wing making left before you get to the end of that very short uh, runway on a carrier. Cool airplane very rugged airplane all the other p40s and spitfires p47s all of them are going up right now for the afternoon air show again guys i apologize that i couldn't get out here earlier and do this duty calls that's what i'm here to do um i also apologize we haven't had any real cool videos up in a while we had that one that i had filmed before i left uh RZ, family vacation, came home, worked a couple of days, now I'm here, so 
It'll take a little while to get back home. We've got some more stuff in the can, some more stuff planned, a lot of stuff planned. Crazy stuff planned. There's one more thing I want to show you. If you guys will just be patient while I walk, I gotta walk about, I don't know, an eighth of a mile or more. What's the temperature here? Uh, probably 69 degrees, maybe 70. Slight wind, you can see it blowing my lanyard. Um, it's been really cool here in the mornings. Almost need a, a slight jacket. Warm in the afternoons, 85. Rained one day. Beats uh, being hot sitting in that weld school. It's been real nice. So, we're coming up to a crossing. Let me flip you forward for a minute. Okay, yesterday, this entire field, as far as you could see that way, were all aircraft. All of them, they've all left. They're either out doing meetings, or they're flying home. So there's a plane coming up here. Okay, so it, we've already established in this video, that I'm a B-17 junkie, right? Like, I like the Christmas Story movie and a B-17 Flying Fortress, okay? So I admit that, right? But as a machinist, metal worker, fabricator, maker, all of that, there's something coming up here that absolutely will, it blows my mind. So everybody has a passion in life, right? Something they're passionate about. Most of us, it's metal, machining, precision, if you're Tom Lipton, that's his thing. We all learn from one another, especially on YouTube, because Tom's good at that. I'm pretty good at welding. You know, Stan's good at grinding. Everybody, Stan Zinkowski, everybody's good at their thing. This guy up here, 17 years, 47,000 logged hours to build this airplane. One of a kind did it all himself. Now there may be a crowd around it because it's been drawing a crowd all week, but before I sign off, I want to take you over to see this. Absolutely amazing. It's a Boeing B-17 like one-third scale flying fortress. You can actually, one person can fly in it. Runs on like uh, two, two cycle, two cylinder engines. It is friggin' cool. I don't have the patience for 17 years to build it, but I want to show it to you. So they're, they have, so they have a movie crew out here. They're doing some kind of shoot. They've got the jib, jib crane. So, excuse me, sir, I'm so sorry. Let me take you guys over here to see this. This is a real flying aircraft. There's the rudder pedals. And his head actually sits up in the cockpit. They're fixed cowl flaps, which he I was talking to the guy who built it. He said it causes a lot of drag. It's not that fast. It cruises about 90. Four real engines. There are two so, uh, two cylinder two strokes. Hold on, we're gonna get a better look. You talk about loving what you do. There is no better way to describe loving what you do than this aircraft right here. That's true to scale, except I believe I heard the wing uh, profile had to change because it didn't scale correctly uh, to give the proper lift. They had to change that a little bit because the wings had to change scale wise, right? Look at that. Is that not beautiful? Look at the rivet work. Now keep in mind, they didn't buy a, buy, a, buy a set of plans to build this. They made this themselves. This isn't buying an aircraft kit and following instructions. The ball turret, top gunner, waist gunner, even the tail gunner's window. The tail shape is correct. It is actually a licensed flying aircraft by the Federal Aviation Administration. How friggin' cool is that? Right? If you are a metal worker, machinist, maker, builder, there is no way, even if airplanes aren't your thing, that you can't have an appreciation for that. 
Let me get you a tighter shot of the engine cowlings. He made this. This isn't patterns. <laughs> I'll go for that is an awesome joke. I put on the screen if you guys didn't see it that they're going to have to get Tom Lipton here to man the ball turret. For those of you that don't know, we didn't look at it on the real uh, B-17 when we were over here. We'll flip the camera around. That ball turret under there, a person actually had to sit in that with his knees up in his chest and fly. It spun around and he could swing the guns down and all the way around to protect the whole underbelly of the aircraft. Only a very, very short, small, statured person could fit in there. Hence my buddy, the Tom Lipton joke. Now you guys know me and Tom Lipton, we like to pick on each other. He's a great sport. We have a lot of fun picking on each other. Here, let me show you this. So this is what you see at Oshkosh. Somebody just bought themselves a partially built airplane and they're taking it home. I'm going to show you this before we sign off. Oshkosh goes that way, this air show. Probably this way to that way is probably a half a mile, maybe a little more. Not quite two thirds of a mile this way. Miles that way and miles this way. What I'm showing you is a very, very smart, a small part of Oshkosh, simply because you don't want to watch me walk around holding a camera the whole time. And honestly, it could get kind of boring. Vendors, uh, all kinds of classes. I'm going to be teaching, I've been teaching TIG welding all week here. Um, Lincoln Electric's got a huge sales booth. You know, they're debuting their plasmas and uh, CNC plasma machines or TIG welders. Everybody, John Deere's here. Every engine manufacturer, oil manufacturer, anything related to aircraft, engine, racing. Oh, Ra I think Roush Racing's here. Ford Motor Company's here. Everybody's here. Big booths, as well as all of the U.S. military. They've got a C58 Galaxy. C-17, um, C-17, oh, oh, cool, I can't get over there because it's way far in the direction we're still walking and I've got to get back to class. Doc is the other uh, B-29, flying B-29 Super Fortress. There's only two, Fifi and Doc, at least that's what I've been told, and Doc hasn't been in the air for a while. Doc is here. For those of you who don't know, the B-29 is the aircraft that carried the bomb to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After the war, they used them for a while. They were all basically mothballed. So, because it's part of the history, a lot of people have pulled them out and they've tried to start restoring them. Parts don't exist, very difficult to keep them flying. So Doc is here, over there. That was the cool one of the cool things over there. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed um, a, a quick rook around Oshkosh 2018. Sorry that we had some video issues. My guess is it's probably the radar here because this airport for one week is the busiest airport in the world. So it's just ridiculous. Planes are constantly coming and going. We should have gotten you here a little bit earlier in the week to see more of the warbirds. A lot of them are out circling. I can hear them circling out in the distance getting ready for the uh, in place for the afternoon air show. The F-35 is here. It flew. The F-15 Strike Eagle, F-16, uh, F-18 flew. Somebody said there's a Harrier here. I don't know about the uh, Osprey. The Osprey was here, I think it was last year. I wish I could take, take you on a video of all of it. Unfortunately, I can't. But I hope you have enjoyed a real quick look around here because a lot of folks never get the opportunity to come here. And I do want to share it with you. Guys, thanks for watching. Again, if you don't subscribe to my channel, please subscribe. I try to share my trips and stuff I do with you as well as the cool projects in the shop. I know I've been away from the shop a lot, but this is my busy time of the year, just like Keith Rucker has his. This is mine. Please subscribe to the channel. You can follow us, all the cool stuff, the little stuff that goes on on Instagram under Do Right Builder. And you can also follow me on Facebook under Do Right Fabrication. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.